is a way of the select board meeting of uh, March 14th, 2018. Uh, first item on the agenda is approved meeting minutes of February 14th and February 28th. I move we accept the minutes of February 14th and 28th. Second. All those in favor? I, I think I will need to abstain for the 14th, only because I was not here. Okay. Okay. Well, at least I don't favor. think I was here. Aye. Okay, for the 28th? Yeah. Okay, and it's approved. Okay, comments from the public? Everybody wishing to make comments? Is that on the agenda? No? Okay. Our first appointment is uh, Keith Bardwell. He's going to talk about a personnel issue here of uh, extension of probationary period. <coughs> on our new employee that we hired, November 20th was his first day. Um, part of the requirements were that he obtain his Class 2A and 4G hoisting licenses. Um, he had part of what the state requirements is, is he had taken the test prior to coming to work for the town, a short time before he came to work for the town, and he, he missed the missed it by a couple of questions or something of that nature. Well, anyways, the state has a policy, you can't take it, retake it for 60 days. So he, when he was able to, he refiled and went and took his, and another thing is the state will only allow you to take one, one test at a time. We required two. So he went back and he took, he's taken his 2A, which is the main um, endorsement. I mean, the main license, the 4G is like an endorsement. Anyways, he has successfully obtained his 2A and has sent his application back in for the 4G. I would anticipate, knowing the way the state operates, that he will probably have a date for a test in April. So at the very least, we need to, or I'm recommending that we extend his probation because it's, it's part of the requirement. Um, he's working out well as an employee, so I don't feel that this is a um, detrimental or that we have like an ongoing situation where, where things aren't gonna ever get better. It's nothing like that at all. So, mm -hmm. so um, I don't feel it's any problem to extend the, the probation in my, my estimate. Now, the one thing that I did discuss with with Brian is the issue of possibility of whether he could <clears throat> start to use some of his benefits that he's accumulating or or whether or not he has to wait until he has that 4G. Um, I don't know if Brian did any more <coughs> or got any more information on that or not. No, that's, that's basically that's basically it. Yeah, it they don't they accrue but they're not allowed to are not allowed to use them during probation period. Yeah. He's doing a normal yeah. person's work. Doing very well. Nothing very, he can't do without the license as well, within reason. He, he can still he can now do the job. the bucket loader and the backhoe and all that, all that, but he cannot operate the boom more, which is what the forge is. It's the more with the big boomer. And, and we haven't had use for that we by my It's not like we don't have anybody. We, you know, already, already have, like Tyler has. It. Yeah, but my point is it hasn't gotten in his way because of the snow. Correct. Right. So how many days of leave does he have built so far? I do not know. I don't have that information. But he's been working for us for about how long? A little over three months. Okay, so three and a half months. A couple of days. Yeah, most. Yeah. yeah. So you're asking him to use just the leave. I know he already has has built up, so nothing beyond I, that. So, right. right. Correct. I, I do know that he has um, told me he's got an upcoming day where he need he definitely needs off, and you know I would like to be able to mm -hmm. tell him he can. Personally, I think he yeah. should be allowed to use. I think that would be. 
I'm, I'm comfortable with giving giving the uh, supervisor the discretion on the on the leave. Um, Absolutely. And I think you made a reasonable case for the extending probation. I don't. I couldn't agree more. I, I don't. I don't know that we have to approve that, but that's. Well, I mean, it was the reason Brian and I felt it was is because you were the hiring board. Oh, yeah. The hiring. No, I, I I think we should grant that. That's how you keep good employees. Okay. Everybody, everybody agree here. I'm yeah. fine with that. Good. Yeah. Fine. Okay. And if, I don't know if we want to set. Do we need to set a time frame on extension of the probation? You think he's going to pass? Yes, I, I would anticipate. And so, how much of an extension would be needed to get to the? Well, I don't know when the set. state will give him a date. That's oh. the issue that I don't have at this point. Oh, so your I, best guess is April, but you don't know for sure. I would leave it indefinite. I mean, he's okay. got to pass the test. And yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, that seems reasonable. Come back and All chat right. after he's done. Uh, you know, if okay. something changes, right. then you'll come back. But Okay. Yeah. All right. And then the other thing, I, real quick, I have is um, I have a reimbursement request for Chapter 90, which I need. It's just so that the, we can get reimbursed, which I need. There's four pages that I'll need. This is for. Work that was done in this past summer, and that's all I have. Okay. Uh, all right. I, I signed my name where it said binds. I mean, I should print it where it says sign. Municipal officials. Yeah. People can read my signature, so it's I'll not a big deal. I'll sign this one. I'm really, I'll sign the other no, side. Right. Okay, can we move on then to the, while we're signing the next uh, board minute is Judy Marklin from the Planning Board is going to talk to us about recreational marijuana. Too much? Uh, it caught me by surprise, that's all. I didn't think you were in the state. He's not going to have Sarah Cooper and Nicholas wanting uh, to here to answer anything I can't answer. So, so. We came and talked to you a month or two ago about re recreational marijuana, and at that point the regulations were not final. And at this point they are, and they involve some procedural issues that <coughs> Brian thought was important that you be aware of. And we had the Peggy Sloan from FERCA came and gave us this nice uh, overview presentation. And you have a handout of it. It's got a lot of details in it that I will address. But it's a good reference point for you. And there are several things that the select board will want to deal with and weigh in on. But it's, this is generally an overview session. So Janet? I can start while yeah. she's. Um, the next slide is is the types of recreational marijuana establishments. That's, that's the word. Um, first, cultivator. You can basically grow and package, and that's it. And and get it to the next stage. A craft cooperative uh, can be either a, or both a cultivator and a manufacturer. The significance of it is it's aimed for small producers and it would work a lot like I'd say Cabot Creamery where you have a whole bunch of people providing materials and then one central processing place. Um, and my guess is that if we at least the farm, existing farmers are going to be active, that would be where. Then there's a manufacturer and they basically do the processing and packaging. Janet? Um, testing. All these, this stuff has to be tested for purity and drug potency and all of that. So it's a specific type of establishment that can be licensed, that is licensed, that can operate in a community. And a retailer, 
Um, this is what has gotten the most attention. It's where you buy the stuff, and then on the street. There are also two more, um, the marijuana cafes, and uh, just a delivery service that doesn't do anything but deliver. Um, those have both been put off until next year, so we don't need to worry about them now. So that's Jim. Peggy Sloan was uh, spent a lot of time with us on this, and it's important. Uh, she pointed out, and you're all aware, that land out here in the western part of the state is a lot cheaper than land back east. And so one would anticipate a fair parish amount of demand for growing, which takes acreage. Growing, uh, most people seem to be predominantly indoors, either buildings or greenhouses. It involves very heavy electricity use, uh, a lot of water use. You need specific uh, wastewater treatment to get rid of pesticides, and she mentioned rodenticides. And, um, there's obviously from, from both the growing facilities where you get big trucks coming in and out, <coughs> traffic impacts from retailers, etc. All of the establishments have, have these security features. They haven't changed. They need to have cameras on the exterior, um, lighting adequate for the security. I think it can be um, night vision cameras that can mitigate the lights, but, but it has to be, you, you want to write the, the rules so, so that you require that if that's what you want. Odor turns out to be a much bigger problem than I had realized. Um, I've been reading some scary articles today from, from the grow houses, and in one, one case it was from an outdoor facility. So that's the growing, not just the cultivar, not just the manufacturing. It's the actual plants in the ground. So, uh, evidently right around harvest season. It's the odor, the the odor the something the you spray on that? Both or? the processing and the growing. Got it, okay. I, I can imagine. I think there are, for inside, the indoor right? stuff, there are filters you can use. And, and I guess there are varieties of marijuana that, that are less odiferous, but. Um, I mean, it's similar to Yankee, Yankee candle manufacturing, yeah, right? The yeah, come right. out yeah. of that. Except so. it smells like skunk. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, that would be a different kind of candle, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, there are law enforcement issues, obviously, if the alarm, if these things have to be heavily alarmed if the one goes off, if the camera picks something up, um, scaling fences. people scaling fences, um, and, and she mentioned it's impaired driving. Um, it's not entirely clear who does inspections, they require a lot of specific treatment of waste, of uh, specific treatment of water. Anyway. Does wastewater treatment have to be on site? Or can they haul it away somewhere? Water? Waste you said water, waste water. Wastewater treatment. You had that on your third or fourth Yeah, floor. I... That's specific. I don't think they're that specific. They're not specific yet. But if it's voluminous water, it sounds like it's a tremendous I, I amount think, of water, so... I think they're talking, you know, that... And thousands and because, of gallons a day, I think right. it would be difficult to. We obviously don't have a wastewater treatment facility no. here. We would have, and, and Deerfield's at capacity, like from it. what I understand, right. yeah. or close to it. So, I mean, that's going to be an issue that we need to, if, if we're behind this in support of our farmers, that we need to, to, to think about. Not to put a facility in, obviously, no. but what do we do? That they have yeah, to be right. Right. too. Right. The, the question that I have, and, and it may not occur, but maybe it's not germane, but on the security piece, what is, you're worried about, or they're worried about people scaling fences, and I, and I get that, but why is that security concern different than putting it, than, than if Whaley had a distillery in town? I don't well, know. Uh, do you get my point? I mean. If you, I don't know, but my guess is it made it, 
it was a political decision. Okay. Didn't, yeah, you, I, didn't you see Reefer Madness? I, I'm sorry, I did not. I did not see that. I apologize. I don't think he's old enough. I I honestly don't know. It's, it's a legitimate question. Yeah, I just that. Because um, I know it's expensive stuff. And and one thing I forgot to say at the beginning: um, a licensed facility has the sea to sale requirements. It can only grow. It can only buy marijuana. It has to be able to track from, from the seed all the way to the sale and follow each plant individually. And that's that's one of the, you need, you need to have software to do that. <coughs> it's also true that all of the marijuana sold legally in Massachusetts has to be grown in Massachusetts. You can't import it over state lines. Can you so export it over state lines? No. You can't transport it over state lines, legally. Federal, right? Yeah, that's of course, right? Of course, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so there's going to be, I think, a lot of demand for growing. That, that's I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, and putting to thinking about the bylaws, uh, we're thinking primarily about place, uh, what kind of establishment goes where, um, the legislation specify that the bylaws can't be unreasonably impracticable. Um, there is no <coughs> definition of that. There is currently... Yeah, I was just going to Google that. What does impracticable mean <coughs> compared to practical? Or reasonably impractical. Yeah, if you just say reasonably practicable. The word nebulous, nebulous comes to mind. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're listed in the regs as uh, costing the grower too much. Yeah, you should probably should say. Right, it, 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 making it impossible to go to market. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's basically it. Dan should be giving this presentation. <laughs> Would be done. Now these are. This is just for the recreational piece. This is, does not impact the medical. Is that accurate or no? Yeah, I think the medical continues to operate on the old stuff, although they can be merged in establishment systems. They're you can. Separate. It can, it can be dual purpose. It can be dual purpose as long as they're separated within it. Um, and I think one of the other things is scale. Um, you'll see a picture at the very end of this where somebody was proposing a million square foot growing facility in the eastern part of the state. Um, I think that's the, the final bylaws, the final regs limited it to 100,000 square feet for any facility, but that's you know, that's two and a half acres. That's is that two and a half? Is that what I was going to ask our contractors in the audience what a million square feet is? Is that two and a half Well, acres? no. 100,000 100, 100, is, 100, is, 100, is two and a half. 300, 20 acres 300 would be the, the million. Holy guacamole. Yeah. We're going to have many parcels of 20 acres. <laughs> that are, yeah, that's well, you, 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 have to, you have to acquire parcels yeah. and, and combine them. So, so it's scale. probably like Chang's. What's that? Like Chang's building. Yeah. That's Chang's probably 100,000. No, James is 15,000. How much? 15. 15? Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so so we need to think about what a reasonable scale is, and the planning board is working on that. And that also influences the amount of water usage. You know, if you've got a really, really giant facility, you're, you're gobbling up tons of water. So, as well as electricity. Janet? Um, cafes aren't an issue now. I just wanted to point out that in order, when they are allowed, the process is that 10% of the registered voters have to petition the town and then there has to be a vote at a state election to approve it. So, just so you're aware. it's. So why is it November 2018 if this is a moot point until next spring anyway? Because this slide presentation was put together before the... Oh, okay. So it would be really November 2020. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's going to be even numbered years. Right. When you say biennial. Yeah. And then it also means that uh, to... I forgot to the, change it. I saw... I, right. 
No, no, no it's okay. Um, it, and here, it means that you can't have like the planning board and the select board go off and approve some cafe. It's really a matter for the voters of the town. Yeah, I thought I and was that, thinking that we could put it on. You know, we could put it on the election, but no, it has to. No, be, it has to it be has to be initiated by the voters. And so it would yeah. be something that we could recommend or not recommend once it was approved by the board. Yeah, yeah. But that's we, it, right? We yeah. have to then decide where where they would go and oh, okay. what the. So, so whether a cafe might exist or not, it's actually kind of a long process, potentially yeah. two years of yeah. time sunk into it, depending on the timing. Yeah, so just uh, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this, there's also a procedure for limits on the establishments. If you want to prohibit a, um, prohibit certain types of uses, like we don't want to have testing labs or we don't want to have growing or whatever, um, then you need to get approval both at town meeting and at a, on a ballot vote. <coughs> and the wording should be the same. Um, the same is true if you want to limit the number of establishments. And I think the limits that people have talked about that I've heard are all for reasons. <coughs> And, and the rule is you can limit it to um, what they say there, fewer than 20% of the number of alcohol licenses. Um, I think the planning board will be talking about whether to recommend limits or not um, on commercial establishments. And partly, I think, because our commercial area is so limited. But, but um, so just to be aware that if we do want to do limits, it's got to be both town meeting and, and an election. It would be nice to do it when, you know, if in conjunction with an election. ban a use without approval at an election. So we are think that if one of these, if somehow the bylaws get voted down, even though we want to go ahead and do it, somebody doesn't like the form of the bylaw we have proposed and it, pass, it doesn't pass a town meeting. I'm not doing it very well. It would be important to have the option to do a moratorium also on the warrant so that you could have time to craft a better bylaw. Did that no, we know I think that's understandable. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um we are talking about special permit and site plan review. Um, that gives, special permit gives, the, well, both gives the ZBA and or the planning board an opportunity to tailor conditions to the situation and also to give a butter, a butter um, input. Um, one option is minimum lot sizes. We haven't discussed that yet, but it's a possibility. Um, setback from certain kinds of uses, either um, schools and places where kids assemble, churches are often ones that are done. Um, Peggy Sloan recommends uh, setbacks from existing residential properties. Um, we will talk about that. Hours of operation, that could be something that's written into the bylaw or um, worked out with the ZBA as part of the special permit. And um, conditions or requirements for water consumption and energy usage. The regulations require, uh, they have an energy limit that didn't mean much to me. <laughs> um, they, encourage, they encourage renewable energy as part of the 
plan. But that's, um, I think we are thinking about things like requiring uh, reuse of water runoff on greenhouses and that kind of thing. What about a maximum lot size? I mean, the example of a million square feet, that would kind of kill the rural character of most towns in the region real fast. 100,000 square feet, not a million. Well, it, I, thought I, I thought she I, said a, I said a million because that's the picture. The, the Rex, when they came out, actually limited it to 100,000. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. But if you had two parcels right but that's to still, each other, with, each with 100,000. That, 100, that, gives an, is, that gives an industrial sort of warehouse. 100,000 is the two and a half acres. Yeah. yeah. That's a big building replacing like, field, perhaps. Yeah, I, th I think we will run into something. My planning board perspective would be that in the ag residential one and two, that is way too big a building to have. I, I would I would advocate for something on this order of 3,000 or 5,000 square feet. What size building is it, say, Yankee Candle? We're thinking of things that look more like barns. Unless it's in the yeah. industrial area or commercial industrial, where a large building would be appropriate. But isn't the Yankee Candle Manufacturing grandfather, or is that industrial? That that was a that was a special permit, wasn't it? Well, it goes back to. Well, it goes back before. So I guess I guess my concern would be treating yeah. different industries with different. <clears throat> no, it's with different view lenses. No, it's not that. If if it's an existing building, it would be grandfathered. No, I, I get right. that, but right. but you allow a manufacturing facility to type like Yankee Candle has on Christian Lane, in a non-industrial. It, it wouldn't be allowed in our current zoning. I, I, okay. So can I just ask a real quick yeah, question? Probably that, right? The the purpose of this presentation here is just to update us on what you've learned about the marijuana laws. Right. Data you so you don't have thinking about the procedures. We don't have right. any specific. You don't have a specific recommendations point. Okay, no. good. All right. We That's may uh, tomorrow. We might tomorrow. We hopefully, but we'll next week or so. But this conversation is a good conversation. Yeah. yeah. We okay. No, I just just I wanted to. Yeah. No, we are not going to make sure I understood. That's what I thought. The one the thing that's important here is I think we're thinking in Agris very much that the the scale and the appearance of the buildings is important. They should not look like factories. They should not look like warehouses. Yeah, my only concern again, and I get it's not necessarily the point, but if you just have barns, barns are small in scale, I'm, I think that may be a barrier to market because can you, do you have the economies of scale to be competitive in the marketplace if you're, main, if you're growing in such a small facility? Well, we haven't talked about limits, but it doesn't have to be one building necessarily. But I, I would, my perspective on the planning board would be filling the farmland with metal buildings to grow marijuana is not necessarily appropriate development for our town. But we have an industrial park, too small perhaps. It's very small, so the, it, it's a barrier potentially. It's just something we yeah. need to discuss. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, there's several things going on. Our, our most towns are, a lot of places are putting this in their industrial area, and there are a lot of big buildings out in the world. Our focus has been trying to help our farmers get right. into the market. Right. And I don't, given the expenses of a lot of this stuff, I don't think too many of the local farmers are going to be talking about a 100,000 square foot building. I just don't know how much you can produce in a small building. <coughs> okay, Paul, you have a quick question? Yes, um, I have not followed this. So um, this is a very uh, basic question. Is there a financial upside for the town, given that there probably will not be a retail outlet here? It'll only be in the wholesale realm. Um, and the town, but it'd be incumbent upon the town to provide, looks to me, uh, like a lot of services to this and to well whatever 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 building ends up being built so is is there something Can that would drive down? us towards this um i'm not sure i agree i certainly don't agree that we won't have retail facilities okay 
um, forward, I'm sorry, uh, number 11. Um, the, the host community can charge what's called the community impact fee to cover costs of extra services. So security, inspections, um, things is negotiated up front. It has to be very well documented. Um, so you have to have a pretty good idea of, or you can't just make up a blanket charge. You have to spend some thought on it. And I guess you renegotiate it periodically. But I think the servicing part of it is, is appropriate. And then I would like to assume there might be some property tax differentials if you've got growing, growing facilities. How many, square, how many square feet did you say Chang, and how many square feet is the North Building? I, I, I am. They're not a blight on the landscape. Well, got a lot of greenhouses that are pretty good size too. Yeah. So yeah, I'm and a lot of these will be greenhouses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I, you could argue about whether Chang is a blight on the landscape. Well, yeah, but I, I guess my point is it exists. Yeah. I mean, it's he it's healthy looking. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, while I'm here, the host community agreement, uh, the host the select board would negotiate an agreement with the um, applicant prior to the application being submitted, and that would have some of the conditions in it, and that's a part of the application. So. I think we've pretty well covered the, those. So, um, then there's the sales sales tax. Oh, the, I'm sorry, the community impact fees. Um, <coughs> and then the sales tax again can be up to three percent. Final regulations are out. Um, they can start with license applications. Um, ideally, we'd have zoning bylaws in place by April 1st. We, we hope to have some for you by the 24th. And um, the process is fairly lengthy for an applicant. They, they, they apply, they negotiate the host agreement, they have public hearings within the town where they can submit the application. So I think if we can get bylaws in place, it will be, a, it will be. Like in the next two weeks? How do we get bylaws in place in two weeks? Well, we get them in place for town meeting. Well, I mean, we'll get them written to be voted to town meeting. But I think it's not a problem even though. Okay. No we, we have some examples of model bylaws. Oh, okay. And we've had a number of discussions with the planning board already. We're, we're hoping that we're going to be able to move quickly okay. and come up with at least something so that we have bylaws in place if we need to change them later to improve yeah. them. But okay. at least we have something. Okay, I just, I, it just do, sounded do. like if somebody yeah. applies on April 1st, they get the laws we have on April 1st, right? If, if somebody applies, you know, the day after town meeting, they get the laws we have on the day after town yeah. meeting. So that's. There's also is, that, is that wrong? Is that. I think that's probably right. That's probably right. But there's also the temporary moratorium issue too, right? If if we enact that, then the, the June one date is not significant. We enact that then. Right. Yeah. Right. But on, they have until December. Of, I think the moratorium is right. Yes, I think the moratorium is till December. Well, they so have. If we won't enact anything by June one. With our next town meeting, then you got you can do it up till December of, of this year. I think the planning board's perspective is that it would be as much as we can facilitate people in Waitley taking advantage of this economic opportunity. We'd like to help them, yeah. uh, no. but we'd like to protect yeah. the yeah. town of Waitley like to as well. So yeah. we want to move as quickly as we can to make sure the opportunity is available. Because if we don't 
if we pass a moratorium or if we don't pass if we don't do anything it appears we, that it's not allowed in Wakely, I think, or else it's a free-for-all. Right. Okay. Well, which is it? I think the, the moratorium is not allowed and you pass nothing. Yeah. How the state law takes over right. it says, the state law says you can do it. It's up to here. But if you're, if you're silent on the issue, there's no As a private citizen, you can do it or you can no. Well, this is be for development, for, you know, if someone wanted okay. to build a building that they wanted to. This has nothing to do with the private. The private citizen stuff is effective. Yeah, you can, you can start growing, I think, right away. Okay. I for your personal yeah. consumption. I just, just easy on your water consumption. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would, it, <laughs> but would it also have to be on the election ballot? If you Not unless you live in town meeting Not if you propose something that for town meeting the regular bylaws if if we don't propose a limit on anything and if we don't propose to ban anything then it doesn't have to go to the election oh okay okay it's great I think, I think that's it isn't it Ken? Uh, I think there's 17 there's one more we'll keep yeah. going oh, oh the process we're <coughs> That process was basically we'll draft a bylaw, there'll be public hearings, and it's voted at an election, and the attorney general has to, you guys know that. Um, and then show them that picture of the million square foot. <laughs> That's the. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Oh, <laughs> It's like an Amazon distribution. <coughs> but as long as they put solar on top of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say the solar. And we can the solar okay, he's, he's buy solar said, from them, buy electricity from them. put a couple trees around it. That's nice. Peggy <laughs> said that they, uh, she tried, she did this in Conway, and people kept asking, can't you show us pictures of small facilities? She said she couldn't find it. Right, well, which, which is the point of the, sort of the, the, the catalyst for my question about if you have a small facility, is it the, the economies of scale just don't don't allow you to go to, I think to it get into the business? Uh, the, actually, I think that cooperative takes care of that because, or much of that, because you can you can spread the computer license. the the um, The application fees are scale based, so the bigger the bigger they are, okay. the, the more application you. But you can you can spread the administrative overhead with the cooperatives. So I think I think the economies of scale, the small one, aren't as bad, aren't too bad. Okay. Are we done with this so we can turn the lights back on? Yep. Is, has there been any discussion of how the, uh, how towns would assess the, the value Scott, of this for tax purposes? I have no idea, but they've got a lot of states to draw on. Thank you. I mean, okay. we we, we, we assess greenhouses and all that and growing facilities, but. Yeah. Uh, whether there's uh, I uh, you're out of my room. Personal property taxes on this or whatever. You might you might uh, do you have a list sir you could talk to other towns. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions for Judy? You, uh, Sorry that people here. Happened. No? Okay. Uh, moving on, old business. The first item is update on water and merger and discussion. Good job. <clears throat> Ryan? So the, the water merger committee and the water district have had two meetings thus far. And um, I think we're, we, we've kind of come to a framework that I just wanted to get your um, opinion on. And that is, um, in terms of how we and how we would pay for this, for the pump houses is really what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think we still need another meeting to, to, to hash it over, but um, the water department is, is um, what's important to them, I think, is, is to keep a consistent, charge a consistent hookup fee. So they're still looking at a uh, $5,000 hookup fee. But I think we need to give credit, and we, we've had these discussions with the committee, um, the district will be transformed. Will be transferring over some assets that have value to the town. Um, specific, certainly, in the, in the in the case of cash, obviously, um, um, there's some land that the district owns that that may be transferred over, 
and there's a limited amount of equipment. And in this case, it's really the water meters that are currently installed within the houses. Now, the water department can retrofit those. Uh, and so the water department, which typically purchases the water meter, would save those costs. Yeah. Um, so what, what we're kicking around is that there would be um, some credit um, off, of the, off of that hook of fee because we're receiving something of value. Um, and we still have to determine what those values are, but that's kind of, and then that would give us, well, I mean, it'd be $2,000, I think it was, well, depending on how many connections, or 39 or 40. Um, there are a total of 43. 43, four of them are for the town, right? Um, it's our school, it's Mike's house, library. So that's that's kind of the framework that we're thinking of, and if, if there's if there's a media objection to that framework, it, you know we want to we want to know if if the idea of for instance accepting land, the value of the land as as part of that as part of the deal. Well, I got to believe that the enterprise zone has run numbers at some level in terms of that trade off. If you're going to trade off hookup. Well, part of the hookup fee, as an example, for the, the the quantifiable piece of the asset. I assume that the enterprise zone slash the town has or should run numbers to see what that cost benefit analysis is. And if it hasn't been done, it really should be done. But I think the framework is accurate. We just, how do you make a decision if you don't understand the numbers first? And the hookup fee is that like one hookup fee for the whole district or is this one for each of the 43 locations it would be one for the each of the locations so yes. it's like hookup fee times 43 yeah right okay so it's not just like it's it's not like five thousand dollars this is five thousand dollars times 43 yes right. which if I'm not mistaken is two hundred thousand dollars ish yeah yeah okay right. Right. so so that that's sounds really like a lot of money to come up with in a short period of time yeah um, so uh, but but I think well, John's right about you know let's quantify something and see what we can do I, I think in terms of we do have a timing problem if we're gonna I think one of the one of the options we have before us is it might make sense to borrow the entire amount and collect the hookup fees and then pay because we have a timing issue if we're, uh -huh. we're going to have everybody and I don't even know if we can yeah. get everybody to pay five thousand dollars the need to but before they start work if we're going to try to coordinate uh -huh. 43 39 people paying five thousand dollars before we start work that would be um, it would be difficult that would be great and it, it also just isn't the way business works I mean you have to get a line of credit you have to do those types of things I also wonder whether it's been there's been a discussion because for some families not all, but for some families in, in, in the district, that's a, a good chunk of change to come up with immediately. And I'm wondering if there's a, 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 an installment plan yeah. um, tied into the, 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 the quarterly water bill charges or what, what have you, so that it's not a big, a big hit all at once, that it might make it more, more pa palatable as well. Yeah. But the enterprise zone must have some level of stabilization. They've got money in the bank that they can also use towards temporary offsetting some of the costs. They probably have between sixty-five and seventy thousand. Yeah. Okay. So not I mean like not nothing. <clears throat> no. But you but you're looking at what, close to three hundred thousand for the whole system, so Yeah, I'm just saying it'd be a part of the part of the part yeah. of the, the numbers game you have to you have to run. Yeah. yeah. But I can I can understand they want to keep their hookup fees consistent. Uh, but I also understand that this is a special situation and uh, if we can do something you know tangible with the, the assets that exist and I think we should I think that framework seems very reasonable and it's one you can defend uh, for say someone else comes along and wants a new hookup and they're being charged five thousand dollars they can't really come back and say well why did they get to pay less you know I mean we have to have something defensible and this sounds like this framework is one where we could get something that's easily defensible and, and, and you know, logically and rightly so. You know? yeah. 
It sounds like it's 5,000 minus assets. Did I misunderstand that? Would, that I that's, think that's what they're proposing. Yeah. 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 So it's not really 5,000. We just don't know what the asset is. Right. Yeah, we don't know yeah. what that is at this point. But the, if you're asking that, but what's my opinion about this framework of yeah. moving forward, I think it's reasonable. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Okay, thank you. Power to concur. <laughs> You got anything to add, Nicholas, as a member of the district? Uh, no? I don't think so. <laughs> Do you agree with what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, said, Nicholas, debate, well said. One of the areas of debate we had is whether the district gets any credit for the pipes in the ground that are going to be used for the water commission. Yeah. And the yeah. water department yeah. doesn't want to credit for any of that infrastructure. Well, it, I don't think that's reasonable. I mean, I think they should. I don't know. I have not been to that many of the meetings, but it does sound like your infrastructure should be worth something. Right. As long as it's in good shape. It's yeah. in good shape. Well, well, there's, there's infrastructure. So the problem, the, the problem, the, the problem that arises is that past subdivisions in town, um, High Plains Estate and Michikoski Circle, have uh -huh. put in their own infrastructure, and. All the all the users were required to pay a five thousand dollar hook of fee, and they were not given credit. They were oh. not given credit for the pipes in the ground. They were well, essentially given to the town. That um, sounds unreasonable. So so that's the that's where the the water department I think is is that's where about our point. So the assets the we're talking about are assets not including the pipe in the ground. Right. Right. It's right. the cash reserves. Right. The value of the land and the value of the hardware in the houses that won't have to be installed by the town. Okay. Okay, moving on. Uh, next item, town hall project update. Discussion, Brian? Um, well, this is just a continuing item I like to keep yeah. on here in case okay. something, something happens, happens. <laughs> during when the project's going on, but it's been going fairly smoothly. Um, we had a construction meeting the other day. Um, I think it's going pretty well. Okay. Uh, I don't know if Fred wants to add anything, but yeah, there there's a lot of uh, tension in, inside on the details of plumbing and electric and heating. It's being worked on inside, and we're meeting to uh, try to finalize the the cost of some extras. We already approved some, and we may need to approve others, but we've got to compare that to the budget we have to see if we have enough money. If we don't. Uh, Building committee is meeting Monday afternoon to talk about it. And also we're talking earlier in the day with the contractor to see what extras we're gonna need yet. There's some things that we need more money for. Uh, and we may be proposing something to the finance committee the next day if, uh, if we need money for additional work. Beyond the contingency that already exists. Yes. Because one, one thing that was not approved was, was the alternate one, which was the front parking lot and sidewalk. Yeah. There's no money in the budget for that. So the building committee is going to meet and decide whether we proceed with that at this time and ask finance committee for money for that or not. We don't know the exact amount today because we have some money already in contingency that may cover part of that. Okay. So we can't say today how much. but. But that was a bid item of like $75,000 for that part of the project, so we didn't have money for so. so but the, but the parts that we did already agreed to do, the things that were not these option right. parts, that part isn't overrun. Uh, it's it overrun like the original contract, but the contingencies that we covered. had are, okay. are, should cover that. Okay. We'll know for sure next week when we, we talk with the contractor in the final. Numbers, but we're within the yeah. but we're within the yes. yes. <coughs> okay. Yep. Unfortunately, the architect didn't bid the front of the building with the building. He built he bid it with the parking lot. That's what they were into. So yeah. Okay. Yep. Moving on, uh, new business, seasonal liquor license renewal for one farm. Nobody failed to renew, and we didn't disapprove anybody for seasonal so we signed there. And this is the seasonal license. Okay. Uh, 
Move on next item. Nomination of Inspector of Animals. Uh, I nominate uh, Rick Adam Chen. He's willing to do it. Second. Okay, all those favor? Aye. Okay. Right. Yep. It's just that one page. Meeting. So we have an informational meeting before the annual town meeting last year. Uh -huh. We had three or four projects that we wanted to discuss and uh, the question has arisen whether whether we have enough material to do another one. Um, I don't know, Fred and I have been talking about it a little bit. Um, But, well, I mean, uh, this year seems like the, the biggest item that people have questions about. Um, or, well, the downtown hall question, but that's not really on the water necessarily. Well, unless the, unless they for ask, more ask for, for more money. Ask for more money it would and then right. there's the bylaw that we haven't seen yet, but will likely be. Um, and, and those two seem like. Okay, the, well, the, the other, at least one other big item is is the uh, blue school and and the town uh, lot adjacent to it uh, bids are due on april 3rd uh, for, for both parcels uh, and there's been some interest i guess we could say in either one right now we've had three site visits so far we've had sites visits uh, kind for of, both or for one or the other well kind of combined no, kind, kind of combined, of kind of combined. Yeah. so you know if we get proposals on april 3rd uh, that may be something we want to vet with the with the community before the annual town meeting. Question: uh, Schedule something in so that April. And would that what be was, too quickly? No. Okay, enough? we don't. We're not ready for for water. The other the other thing was uh, what was the other thing? It wasn't complete streets. It was one other. One of the items I mentioned to you earlier today. Did you guys write it down? You didn't write it down? No. How are you going to write it down? Selling, it down? selling that piece of land for an informational meeting might, to me, strikes me as quite in the weeds. You know, this is what this is just the what people in town charge us to accomplish. I don't. I'm, I'm not convinced that the RFP responses are going to be so earth-shaking that it's warrants the time and energy and resources into and would it be on the oh, it would be on that town meeting warrant would people have to vote on it and be informed about it for that town meeting what may be on the warrant is if frontier frontiers the owner of the of political school if, if they uh, accept a proposal that triggers our period um, to exercise a right of first refusal Okay. So if there's if we think they're going to sell it for a dollar to and have a that outcome, then we need to think long That's and hard fair. about about I, whether the fair. town should step in or not. Yep. Uh, or conversely, it would be optimistic that somebody yeah uh, a good developer comes in and someone who has a great plan and it is local. Um, we would not just nice for it. The, the, the other thing that may be important is is the use oh, use of the facility, the use of the, of the parcels, both parcels. What is being proposed? I mean, we've heard some things about it. Uh, people may may be concerned about that, the future use of the building, of the parcel or the building. Right. Well, so, that, if we're going to have a town meeting, informational meeting, it should be related to things people will have to vote on at town meeting. Well, I think that's that's not an unreasonable thing to say. Now we don't know if there would be anything related to that, but potentially there's that. There's a marijuana bylaw, and right. there's uh, a possible uh, money for the parking, at the town hall. It right. seems like it's well, something we could schedule. We could always do a budget preview. Yeah. What's that? We could always do a budget preview. We certainly could. I mean, but but two of those three are. I mean, I guess none of them we have. In front of us right now, but although right. I, I would be surprised if the planning board did not get us a bylaw in time, 
I would. Uh, I don't know what will happen with bids. It's, I think those are yeah. uh, likely one or one or the other of those is going to come true. Okay. The the other thing that's coming up is could be an issue is is the, the town hall future use of the town hall. Uh, will there be something on the warrant about that? No, but it okay. would be a chance. That's a use policy. I think. Yeah. A, a chance to, to get public input on what they would like to see for the uses of the town hall because we've had some some interest in, in what is being proposed some comments on what's being proposed and I guess it would give the board additional insight as to which way we should go with a with a use policy well I think that could be a, a separate thing that doesn't have to be tied to and happened before town meeting no, it doesn't. But yeah. but if we're gonna, have, we have an opportunity to get people at a meeting, informational meeting. You know, I I think all the ones in the past have not been tied to a town meeting. The last one was because it was mostly for an update on the town hall, and we discussed the future, the funding package for the town hall. The one before that was we had four major projects one again was the town hall the water merger which was, was very general no specifics no no uh discussion hookup fees or cost just just the, the concept of merging then there was the uh housing trust again uh, i had, i don't know no that wasn't but, but, but aren't we just arguing in favor of having a, a i mean the question is yeah. do we want to schedule an informational so. meeting related to annual town meeting and it sounds like we're both uh, arguing that might be a good idea yeah. okay. to get it on the schedule and so you're not convincing I mean I'm already convinced. okay you're all convinced okay, yeah. well, the only okay. question is what what would actually be on the agenda so before posting we need an agenda but we can figure that out we can, can, we, figure, yeah, that we can figure that out um, a date of, unless there's going to be more finance committee meetings on into Tuesdays in April, which I don't think we have. Um, you know, could, we, could we do one of the Tuesdays in April or Wednesdays in April? Uh, well, we should do it. I, I think after the, the the bids are open on the on the third, uh, give us and Frontier time to discuss them. When does the warrant have to be set? That's like We're aiming to sign the warrant April 11th, and that's really, we can only go a couple of days beyond that. Right. But if this is informational, it's just, it, it could be before or it could be after the expected warrant. If it were the 10th. I'm looking at 9th or 10th if we go that, that week. But yeah. do you see any benefit to, on the marijuana issue to have more, to enact the moratorium, to give us more time? to make a reasonable decision about things. It sounds like we're shoehorning this. Yeah. And, 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 and with, there are a number of plates being spun here, and that's a big one. And, mm, uh, it, yeah, they, I'll yeah. speak for the planning board. They've been working diligently on this. Yeah. As much as you're coming into it from the tail end, right. they've been on it for months. Yeah. So they, they, have a, they have a meeting tomorrow, yeah. And they have a public hearing scheduled. Yeah, I think they're good to go, personally. But, but so, the, so it, it, that might be dupli duplicative, duplicative, to have another informational meeting on it. But that it wouldn't necessarily hurt to to duplicate in that sense. No. And their public hearing, will be, they're, they're going through their due process. And that I would like to see what they do. Last time they came back to us and said we should have a moratorium for six months. And we backed them on it. When, back when medical marijuana first came into yeah. being, so I, I guess I would rely. I would depend a lot on what the planning board says uh, about their their work to me, because I think that I agree that they're very hardworking, they're diligent, they dot their eyes and cross their teeth. So that's the thing I would wait for on that. I, I think I'm sure they're considering it as one of the options. They put it in their stack of things. When's the meeting? They have one tomorrow at five. And that's an informational meeting for the public? Or? Well, it's a public yeah, I mean, it's meeting. Public. On so they hear, hear. Look at your, you have no, they have a scheduled hearings. hearing, I believe. I, um, I, think, uh, I shall look it up. But 
in that are proposed here. I don't know if there's an actual, there should be a date, but I'm not sure to be honest. Are but, they going to make recommendations? Yeah. Is Julie part of that process? Oh, yeah. It she, sounded like she, she, today, like she, she's pretty much up in the air and yeah, didn't yeah. have any real. No, they're on it. See, it doesn't go into effect until tomorrow, March 15th. These bylaws from the state, from the state, become effective. So up to this point, they've only been dealing with drafts. But, but that's the kind of a subject that it is good yeah, for the commission right. meeting because yeah. you have time yeah. to discuss it. At, at, at yeah. annual yeah. meeting, yeah. you got 38 articles yeah. you need to run through for approval, and you right. don't have time for a half hour or an hour presentation. So, uh, but, but the but if they go with the the moratorium, it doesn't have to be till the end of the year, does it? Can it say till? Till September one. I don't think they want a moratorium. No, but it, but if they're not, if they only need another month or two to finalize what yeah. they're proposing, it's not on the calendar. I mean, they don't have to say it's it's, it's goes till December, does it? Can't they well, say it'll September or? Yeah, I mean, I mean, my only thought is they're the planning board. I, I good job, mm -hmm. congratulations. But you don't make the laws. You. Yeah. This now there's further discussion with so, with select board and how this is going to be how yeah. this is going to be run out right. in terms of verbiage and whatnot. Why don't you come to the five o'clock meeting tomorrow and then see what you think? Yeah, I mean I want to actually go read the content of the slides a lot more to kind of because I think basically the presentation Judy gave gave us a uh, here's the parameters that then we have to work based on the states regulations right. and uh, I don't think she said much about what would actually be in the bylaw but she kind of explained what is it we have control over and what is it we don't okay uh, if we're gonna have a moratorium it is only until December 2018 that's it no more moratoriums after that um, and that's I think if there I'd like to see what they have to say oh absolutely first if you go on the canvas commission yeah by uh, Google it. It's, uh, yeah. it's all this without 70 pages. Yeah. But I think it would it would still be good for them to present something, say by April 10th, to get the reaction of the town people yeah. on that. And and I guess we can still decide whether we want it on the Warren article or is a Warren article town meeting or not. I mean, if we don't think that that we're ready to vote on it because you know majority of the people are against doing anything regarding marijuana in town, then the three of us we, at planning board are gonna sit down and decide, well, what's the best way to approach this? And how do we market it to people that get support? Yeah. Uh, you just don't, like your policy, and ramrod it down their throat in two weeks, you gotta decide what to do. I mean, it's it's not the best approach. So I, mean, I, I think we, anyway. we're gonna need more than one, one date, I think, because we have to coordinate with the school to see when it, the building is open, because we're gonna, uh, Supposed to use the school oh, no. cabinet, the school I auditorium. I think we could probably. So you're ninth, or are you available on the ninth? Right. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm about to look at that. Uh, on, it's hard for me on Mondays. I can't, okay. I can't leave work yeah, until six, too. and that's. Well, it wouldn't be six, so we could do at seven o'clock. The ninth is hard for me. No, I'm able to come in. The ninth, yeah, I've got another meeting on the ninth right. already. Okay. Um, so the tenth works the best. The tenth, eleventh is. Well, unless we have yeah, a meeting on the eleventh. We might. It's a second. I have heard of that. So we could combine it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Double check on the on the calendar. Okay. The okay. So let's look at, at April tenth and. Tenth or eleventh, or even the twelfth of that week. Is that? Uh, yeah. So far, week? it's the twelfth. Okay. Yeah. We'll check if it'll be 12th. Yeah. With the preference towards ten. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on next time to Mass DEP Culvert Replacement Municipal Assistance Grant Program. Brian? So last year, Mass DEP put out a pilot program for, uh, a, a pilot grant program for culvert design and replacement. We applied, but we didn't get uh, awarded. But Keith and I would like to apply again because they've renewed the program outside of the pilot. Um, because I think they had, I think because they identified that a lot of towns have culverts that are in need of repair. Popular program. Yes. 
Um, so I was just looking uh, to see if you would like to apply. And so we would be applying to replace a culvert on Williamsburg Road. That will get let's more traffic it. once the bridge is on. Let's, let's apply. I mean, that's like free money, right? Free money to do stuff that needs to get done? It needs to be done. I think that's a no-brainer. Free money for sure. stuff that needs to get done. Free. There's only one he's applying for? I think one we can only apply for one. Yeah. On Williams, Williams, Road, really? Yep. But that's, that's the one where we got the bridges. We need two bridges in, right? That's that, that's that road, this, yeah. The culvert yeah. would be in for the... The culvert's further up. So that's not in place of the third bridge that's no. deficient. Okay. Right. I, I have last year's application. Uh, yes, if they see, yeah, so. I was gonna say if there are more deserving culverts, I, I don't have any particular favorites among the culverts that might be re yeah. redone, but I would leave that to the highway folks to okay. know which is the right culvert. Town administrator update. The last time we had, we had spoken, I was very hopeful that we didn't have to go through the 32 feet process to, for the insurance change. Well, uh, my hopes were dashed, and uh, uh, the MTA representative, Massachusetts Association representative, counseled our local representative that we should go through the process. So we had our first meeting this afternoon, and we're jumping through the hoops. The next meeting will be so. This afternoon was our um, insurance advisory committee, which we don't have, but it functioned as our insurance advisory committee meeting, which does nothing but make recommendations. They didn't make any recommendations. So now we have to form a public employees committee, which happens to be most of the same people, because we have one union. So we have a okay. union rep and a retiree representative. And now we'll meet again oh. and discuss all that we're bargaining over or, or talking about is in what form is this reimbursement going right. to happen. Okay. And now we have the two or three meetings to figure out how the amounts are all happen. set. The amount okay. is set. Our bottom line is set. It's it sounds like you could have all these meetings on one afternoon if everybody was just really on top of it. But there's, that, a, no. there's different notices that need to be yeah. so we could have done all the notices at once, but even the notices are different. Not well, well it's not well thought out, but why no. you can't make the big bucks. That's not a surprise to anybody that state regulations aren't well thought out. Take that off the camera. <laughs> um, oh no, let me repeat. State <laughs> regulations are not well thought out, and we see that pretty much every week. Yes. Are we, are we done then? I think that's I think that's about it. Jonathan will be happier happy if he was here with my one update. Okay. So you can uh, well, then I would move to adjourn. Okay, second.